because he wanted to have a generous heart with me. Now we'll go to these stupid movies with me, and I'll watch <laughs> basketball with him. And let me tell you, we have a really good time. So that's yeah. what I mean by having a wabi-sabi generous heart. Yeah, well, I, I, yeah, it's just about, you know, being open to the possibility of what could be. Yeah, exactly. I think so. So how do we apply the principles of wabi-sabi to our relationship, even if we feel like we're headed south? Well, you know, there are several stories in the book about couples who were on the verge of divorce and then, you know, just decided to choose. Um, either one or both of them decided to fight for the marriage. Right. You know, and so one of it was like one woman had already divorced her husband. He had been cheating and lying and, you know, a betrayal to the max. But she still loved him, and she knew that underneath all that bad behavior was the man she fell in love with. So she decided that even though they were now divorced, she was going to befriend him. They were going to co-parent together. She would find ways to find the good in him. And sure enough, they eventually fell back in love. They went to a lot of couples counseling. It didn't happen overnight. Right. But they're now married again. And so it's really about making a choice to have a shift in perception to look for what's possible, not what's impossible. Yeah, and I think it's also about deciding that, you know, sometimes we have to decide that divorce is not an option. Right, because here's two things. Okay, I gave you the statistics. So if you divorce husband number one thinking it's going to work out with husband two, the odds are not in your favor. And if you really want to get a sense of how miserable a lot of single people are, (laughs) go out with your single friends a couple of times. Yeah. You know, yeah. and just really, I had one friend do that. She was, she was honestly on the verge of divorce with her husband. They just weren't getting along. They both had big careers, and they had one kid, and they were always fighting over who was going to take care of the one kid. And, um, and then she went out with a bunch of single women yeah. three times in one week. Mm. And by the time she was done seeing how slim the pickings were out there yeah. and how awful their lives were, or at least they said they were, they, she got them into therapy, and now they're, they're doing much, much better. It's not perfect yet, but they've made the commitment to find a way to make it work. Well, you know, there's this wonderful saying that uh, I once heard at a wedding, and um, the uh, minister was talking, and he said, you know, the grass is always greener where you water it the most. And it, <laughs> and it just hit me as like, this is such a simple concept, but we forget about that. Because I think we live in a society where we're kind of always looking for the next shiny object. And the next shiny object is probably that person who's right in front of you who you decide to marry. Exactly. Or to be in a relationship with. Right. And and it's really, you know, we get so hyper-focused on the small stuff. Yeah. You know, if you can just drop back into those feelings of, you know, partnership and connection and building family and... Having someone who's got your back. Yeah, having a safe place to fall. Right, Uh, yeah, it's a safe place to land. That's really what I love best about being with Brian. He's always there for me. And does he do stuff that makes me crazy? He does. Yes. He does, and I do stuff that makes him crazy. But here's the difference. I know that he does not wake up in the morning thinking, what could I do today to really drive Ariel nuts? (laughs) That is not a thought he ever has. You know, like, I'll tell you, too, that, like, so I'm messy. I'm a real slob, and Brian's a neat neck. And when we first got together, I was always getting little lectures like, how much more effort would it be to put your coffee cup in the dishwasher rather than leaving it in the sink? Right. You know, or couldn't you just wipe up the crumbs around the toaster? Now, these are just unconscious things that I didn't see ever. And he, so finally he decided, you know what, it's just easier to pick up after me. Right. Than to lecture me. That was very nice of him. Ariel, I gotta take a quick okay. break. Stay with us. You're listening to the Cindy Laverty Show. I'll be right back with Ariel Ford.